Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ben Stapleton. I'm the executive director here with the U.S. Green Building Council, Los Angeles. Uh, really excited for uh, this this webinar Wednesday today, uh, where we're going to be covering our, our Healthy Building Alliance, uh, which is a program we launched in, in 2020, uh, really to help provide a, a entry level solution for folks who really want to get into to having a healthy environment, whether it's at their home or their workplace. Um, we really felt there needed to be something that was more accessible for the communities in our region uh, to access having a healthy space. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, while we wait for, for folks to go ahead and, and log in, uh, just a quick word of, of background. Uh, so we're uh, the U.S. Green Building Council Los Angeles. We're an independent nonprofit. So while we're affiliated with the, the National Green Building Council that, that runs a LEED certification credential that many of you know and love, um, our mission is different. We're really focused on advancing sustainability in the built environment for Southern California uh, and really to, to really make this a, a more sustainable region for all. Uh, and ultimately, we're focused on, on people and community. Uh, we're, we're a member organization uh, and we cover LA County, San Bernardino, Riverside, Ventura, and Orange County. So really pretty big area here in, in Southern California. Next slide, please. Um, you know, I would encourage you to, to, to get engaged with us. You know, if, if what we're talking about today resonates with you, uh, you know, become a member, join a committee. I'll, I'll share our committees with you here in a moment. Uh, be a mentor or volunteer for something that speaks to you. Um, you know, you can support some of our initiatives like our Healthy Building Alliance uh, that we're reviewing today. Uh, and also you can really build yourself um, through our talent portal and some of the other opportunities we have for education and professional development. Next slide, please. Uh, along those lines, we have some great upcoming content here in the month of March. Uh, I feel like events are getting into full gear for us uh, right now. Uh, a couple things uh, I'll point out, uh, you know, we're here today talking about the Healthy Building Alliance. We have other programs. Uh, so uh, in a couple of weeks, we're talking about our Net Zero Accelerator. We have a great event. Um, is that tomorrow? No, that's next week on an introduction to green building certifications. So really covering all the certifications that are out there that, that could be a fit for you. Uh, and then really happy that on March 19th, we're going to have um, some training around um, anti-bias, anti-racism here in the sustainability industry called Pathways to Positive Peace. It's really a professional development opportunity for folks who, who work in our space. Uh, so you can, I hope you can join us for some of our upcoming content. Next slide, please. And all this is accessible through our talent portal. Uh, we, la we launched this actually exactly a, a year ago. Uh, really to help provide a centralized hub for the region for featured employers, for job postings. Uh, we have a mentor network that's associated with this. You can access all of our training as well as recorded content, um, most of which we all try to make it available for, for free. Next slide, please. I mentioned our committees earlier. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of committees. Uh, really, these are groups of people who are passionate uh, about an issue that speaks to them and, and really they want to work together to help advance their cause for our region. I encourage you to come out and join a committee that, that speaks to you. Um, everything's virtual right now. All these committees meet once a month. And we really have some great programs that are associated with each of these committees. And I, I look to these groups to, to frankly be our, our little think tanks uh, and advisory groups for the initiatives that we have here within the organization. Next slide, please. Uh, if you feel inspired, uh, we have a, a pretty small nonprofit team here uh, that makes all of our, our content happen. Um, please donate by texting uh, GREEN to 707070. Uh, anything you can do really, really helps support the, the work we do. Next slide, please. I also want to say thank you to our sponsors and partners. Um, you know, they really make it possible for us to do everything that we do. Um, you know, it's really a, a great group of, of organizations that are supporting our work uh, and also contributing to sustainability here in the region in many ways. Next slide, please. All right, so I've, I've covered the welcome remarks. I may be a little bit behind schedule, but not, not much. Sometimes I can be a little too verbose. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to work on that. Um, we're gonna dive here into an overview of our Healthy Building Alliance program, which we're really excited to debut for you uh, with Devin Saylor, who's been really instrumental in helping us grow and build the program. Uh, we're gonna hear from Jura Happold, uh, from Kathleen Hetrick, who's a USGBCLA board member and just a fantastic person who's gonna to speak to some of the work they're doing at Bureau Happold. And then we're gonna hear from Vicki Tucker at Zinner Consultants uh, on the work they're doing in the home office environment. And then we'll have some time for, for Q and A. Next slide, please. All right, so why healthy buildings? You know, why create just one other thing? You know, do we really need something else to deal with? Uh, well, frankly, this has been something for me that um, I'd spent several years really kind of thinking through and really thought was needed. 
Um, I've, I've gone through the well certification process. Um, you know, I've gone through lead certification and, and others um, in managing buildings. Uh, and, you know, it's a lot of work. There's a reason those consultants get paid a lot of money to, to guide folks through those, through those certifications. Uh, and it really takes dedication of time and resources. And what really struck me is that if we're really trying to provide, you know, healthy spaces for everyone and make those things accessible, uh, it's going to take something a little different. And, you know, for me, it really came back to the power of commitment and, and personal responsibility. And so we wanted to create a commitment that anyone could make uh, to have healthy space that would give them um, some principles to, to focus on, to, to have that within their own environment. And for us, this was really an equity issue. One of the things that really struck me over the last couple of years is just that indoor air quality uh, can be sometimes two to five times worse than outdoor air quality. Uh, and that, you know, 50% of those illnesses that affect workforces are related to their work environment. Same thing's really true at home. You know, our home environment has such a big impact on our health. Uh, and that, you know, companies talk so much about what they're paying for the rent of their space, uh, but they don't talk enough about how their space is actually impacting their employees' productivity, their sick days, their ability to retain talent. And those things actually speak far more um, to, to the revenue of, of those organizations. Uh, and so that, that's part of why we really wanted to create something to be an entry level commitment, sort of the gateway to, to, to building health. And that's why we launched the Healthy Building Alliance. Next slide, please. So, so what is the Healthy Building Alliance? What is it? Uh, it's a commitment to these principles. And we spent a lot of time speaking with industry experts about what would be that, that low hanging fruit that people could really make an impact on themselves. Uh, our goal here is to really help people make the commitment and then guide them in the journey, provide the resources, provide the, the connections to things that will help people on their journey to have healthy space. And so there's a lot of things we could have included potentially in, in the Healthy Building Alliance. We really wanted to limit it to five simple principles. And so those principles are improving air quality, using green cleaning uh, practices and products, really making nature accessible uh, in your space, promoting movement, and then uh, water quality testing. Part of the reason we, we chose these principles also is that there's a surprising lack of building level data, specifically around indoor air quality and water quality. Uh, and we really want to try to generate data with this program that can help inform future work. Uh, we also provide tenant surveys. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things too, you, you kind of assume people often survey their tenants uh, or their employees about their space. And frequently people do not. And it turns out when you do survey people uh, about their space, the things that we're mentioning here are actually things that people care about. Uh, and sometimes I don't even know that they're impacting the health uh, the, the way that they should. So we're really excited about this program. Our goal is to really make healthy buildings accessible for everyone by providing a commitment and a pledge that people can make individually. And like I said, we can support them uh, on their journey. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, now with that, I'd like to introduce Devin uh, Saylor, who's been, as I said, just instrumental in really helping us grow and um, initiate this program. So thank you, Devin, for all your hard work and uh, over to you. Great, thank you, Ben. Um, so I'm going to walk through the five categories that Ben referenced in the previous slide and give you just an overview of what's included in those categories. And then I'm going to turn it over to Kathleen Hetrick at Borough Happold, and she's going to walk through how they incorporated the five categories into their, their office space. And then a later development um, with everything happening with COVID, we ended up launching a home office checklist to help people who are working from home make a space that's going to help them be healthier and more productive. And so Vicki Tucker is from Zinner Consultants is gonna walk through how to make your um, space healthier while we're all uh, working from home. So, you know, just as a, a starting point, you know, and going back to what Ben said, indoor air quality, is can be two to five times more toxic than outdoors. And the really scary part of that is that we spend up to 90% of our time indoors in these enclosed spaces. Um, so this was probably the, the first and most important um, category that, that we looked at. And um, you know some of the things that we looked at were what are areas where common contaminants can be found. And, you know, these can be, if we're talking in homes, it can be stoves, furnaces. Um, and what we're looking for is how we make sure that we have enough oxygen in the space. So we're eliminating um, toxins such as carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, and small, par small particles. Um, also with our indoor spaces, we have um, furnishings, fabrics, 
cleaning products and um, materials that give off toxic um, toxins, I should say. Um, so when we looked at what we were gonna select for all the categories, we looked to existing rating systems such as FitWell and Well um, to go through and identify some of the ones that were what we felt were most important as well as what wouldn't incur a, a huge cost. And, you know, just to point out the uh, Healthy Building Alliance is not a certification. It's just a series of recommendations that anyone can follow um, with the exception that there are two requirements. And one is that an uh, air quality test be done as well as a water quality test. Devin, you just went on mute. Just Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Um, so the next, the next category is incorporating green cleaning products and methods into, into our indoor spaces. Um, a lot of common cleaning products can be really, really toxic and have a lot of hazardous ingredients. Um, so we wanna promote using green cleaning products um, whenever possible. And, you know, with time, a lot of these products have gotten quite good and are, even in times of COVID, are just as effective at, at cleaning um, spaces as more toxic um, products. So that was something that, that we really wanted to emphasize here that just because it's, it's green, it doesn't have to be any less effective. Devin, you went on mute again. I'm not sure why that keeps happening. Because I keep trying to change the slides myself. Oh. <laughs> uh, sorry. So um, with this access to nature, we wanted to really incorporate uh, plants and nature into our built spaces. Um, studies have shown that exposure to plants can help people's wellness and well-being. Um, they can serve to promote, um, to reduce stress, and also to just make the environment more pleasant, which will increase productivity and overall health and wellness. Okay, next slide. Um, inspiring movement, so really trying to promote getting people active in their space. And so whether this is encouraging people to take the stairs, um, to um, walk down halls, um, avoid taking the, the elevator. Um, you know, if, if we can make people more active, then we're gonna lead to reduction in things like heart disease, diabetes, um, dementia, and depression. Next slide. Water testing, um, you know, we wanna make sure that we're giving everyone access to clean and healthy water. So as I mentioned, this is one of our, our requirements that uh, a water test to be conducted. And really we, water can have a lot of contaminants. And if we're encouraging people to drink lots of water, we wanna make sure that we're providing healthy, clean water so that everyone has a equal chance to drink healthy water. Next. All right, so um, as I mentioned, you know, when we first uh, started and first promoted the Healthy Building Alliance, it was to address um, affordable housing and workspaces. But now because everyone is working from home and less people are going into an office, we really saw a need to address how people are working from home. Um, and so we developed, we used those same five categories, but tailored them to the home office. Um, and then, you know, we have uh, the main checklist, which addresses um, any kind of space from workspace to living spaces. And all of this information you can find on the, the website. We have, a, um, we have a, a site dedicated to the Healthy Building Alliance, both the main program as well as the home office program on the website. 
um, which here is the link. Next slide. Um, and this is just a, an overview of, of what you get. So if, starting with the workspace or the, um, the main program, we put together a list of guidelines with resources to help companies um, achieve what their healthy building goals are. And then we also have a list of service providers who are part of the program. The way the program is structured, you can follow the guidelines um, or you can hire one of our service providers. And our service providers are uh, general consultants such as uh, Zinner, Bro Happold, who could help you in multiple areas or their specific service providers such as biophilia and um, water and air. Um, home office guidelines. This is also just a, a series of recommendations and then more detailed uh, resources to provide access to um, recommended resources, additional re uh, reading and recommendations on where to get products. Next slide. Um, we have been very fortunate to have a lot of interest in the program. So these are just some of our, our launch partners who have really been instrumental in, in pushing the program and helping us get it off the ground um, for their tenants, their own office space, and as well as um, to their personal networks. And next, we are fortunate to have two of our service providers here with us today, Zinner Consultants and Burrow Happold. Um, and as I mentioned, we have uh, a variety of, of service providers who can address any, any area of the building that um, anyone participating would like to focus on. Okay, um, so now I'll turn it over to, to Kathleen. Thanks, Devin. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay, great. Um, uh, yeah, really excited to talk about this. I think this is such a great initiative. Um, you know, I'm a, my background is in engineering and I work for Burrow Happold and, um, you know, we specialize in sustainable design, healthy buildings, and, you know, we've been working with clients on a lot of healthy building systems like FitWell and Well Certification in a lot of time. There can definitely be a barrier to entry in terms of um, cost. And I think that, you know, a, um, an initiative like H, um, the, you know, the Healthy Building Alliance is so great because it can really break down those barriers and, and get organizations to start thinking about human health, um, you know, right, right here and right now. And so amazing that Vicki's going to be able to talk about, you know, bringing this into, you know, our, our homes so we can, you know, share those benefits with our family. So a little bit about uh, Burrow Happel. So we moved to uh, downtown LA in 2013. We used to be in Culver City. We're a global engineering consultancy, but very, um, you know, lucky to work in Los Angeles, and that's where our staff are um, based. I mean, 70 of our engineers. We do, you know, full-scale consulting engineering, MEP structures, you know, that, that kind of thing. We do a lot of sustainable and healthy building consulting, um, sustainable master planning. We work with organizations on their carbon neutrality plans and helping them reach their CSR goals, which is, you know, really great for, um, really great uh, parallel to HBA. Uh, next slide. So I wanted to kind of go through, um, you know, some of the steps that we took to, to meet, um, you know, the, the, the requirements. Um, one big, one big um, thing that we were able to, to, to really help us achieve the indoor air quality monitoring was we were using AWARE continuous air quality monitors. They're available for both businesses and for like your personal home. Uh, you can see the graphic here is an excerpt of, you know, the, the user interface. So it's a lot easier to use um, in terms of indoor air quality than a lot of the older uh, models. So you can watch the air quality in real time. And that's really essential to, you know, helping make change um, to improve the indoor air quality of your office and really connects to things like green cleaning. Um, our AWARE monitors, they measure particulate matter, super important for Los Angeles, right? With the, our, um, our traffic problems and our wildfire problems. VOCs, uh, you know, it's, we can do a lot. Our project is actually LEED Platinum certified, and you know we did install, uh, you know, zero or low VOC, you know, paints, furniture. But we can't, um, you know, it's not just the furniture and the permanent fixtures that bring in VOCs. It could be someone's perfume. It can be the green cleaning products. So it's something that we really need to monitor 
uh, continuously. The CO2 levels um, and then temperature and humidity for thermal comfort. Um, the AWARE monitors, um, they're also available to give you weekly or monthly reports and you can kind of dial the, the right um, parameters if you need to. We also worked with our building. We're leasing the top floor of a 16 story building and we're working with Omni and we were able to um, improve our MERV 13 filters and you know, work with the maintenance team to make sure that those were getting um, changed on a quarterly basis and, expect, and inspected. So um, none of these were you know, huge uh, cost items for us. And, and they, they, they really were um, big improvements that we could make and share with um, you know, our employees so they could understand the improvements that were being made. So that's IAQ, and then the next slide. Um, green cleaning was really interesting for us. So because we were continuously monitoring our air, we realized that there are actually some um, pretty high spikes in VOCs in some of our um, areas of our office. So we were able to use that data to then you know, talk to um, you know, my fellow employees and say, hey, you know, do you, you notice um, you know, is there anything that's bothering you in the office? And one plumbing engineer actually was like, yeah, sometimes I get headaches. I think it's after the green cleaning, the cleaning staff comes in. And so we were like, wow, why didn't you say anything before? But, you know, it, it's really hard to kind of get people to speak up about things and especially they don't know what the cause is. So with that data, we were able to talk to uh, the janitorial staff and understand what products they were using. And, you know, we worked with them to develop a green cleaning policy, improve their choices of products. Um, you know, kind of creating some like pretty basic reporting measures, like the forms on the back of the like the restroom doors, right? Um, so not only was this just like a great learning experience for us, but improved the you know the health of you know our employees, but also even the janitorial workers who've now used that throughout the whole building. So you can really have a lot of impact by you know small change like that. Um, and then the next slide. Um, another thing that um, we started doing is that. Uh, there's there's some the actually I think you know with a lot of the concern around PFAS or you know what you've read about like um, the water in Flint, Michigan. There's been a uh, you know a huge crop up of um, affordable water quality testing um, services. So you know they basically send you a lab kit. You can test your water. It's really important that we test our water in Los Angeles. We usually have issues with um, chlorine and um, other. Um, contaminants like that, but chlorine is like a big, big problem for us in LA. So we test the water quarterly and, and test for up to 200 EPA chemicals. We do have under sink carbon filtration, um, active carbon filtration in our kitchen sink water that provides some of our drinking water. And then, you know, we purchase kind of the standalone filters, like the pure filters that have, you know, reverse osmosis and all of that. So one, one way of looking at the water is you can have the standalone filters or you can kind of have it installed under your sink, there's pluses and minuses to both, but um, you know, there's definitely two things to look out for. And we also even have fruity water. You can see in this image, it almost looks like there's some goldfish um, floating in a, uh, a tank of water, but they're it's like orange water. So, you know, when we source our local produce to try to get our, our engineers to drink more water, um, that's one way that we incorporate that. So the quick rundown of how we're addressing the water. And then the next slide, um, this is definitely, I think, my favorite slide. So we're lucky enough to have um, balconies on our 16th floor, which is pretty incredible. So we worked, um, uh, a lot of uh, our young folks in our office, we really wanted to bring more greenery into our office. So we worked with um, you know, a, a landscape partner that we've worked on with some of our other projects with to design a space that could kind of you know, um, improve biodiversity. So we're using native and adaptive plants. We even get some hummingbirds up to the 16th floor every now and then, which are really cool. Um, but just to provide green space, we've been growing um, kind of water hardy crops like um, you know peppers and thyme and different species of mint, which is really interesting. I definitely don't have a green thumb, but um, some, some folks in our office do. And to reduce our carbon emissions, we also use a vermiculture system. So we're using worms to do all of our um, composting for our food waste. And then we can use that compost on the garden we have um, two rain barrels that are actually getting put to use today, which is really cool. Um, and we use that for irrigation, along with some um, joey cans that actually collect the water from our showers. Um, but we do have indoor plant walls. I would say that they can get expensive. We've gone through a couple of vendors. It's, you know, we do have recommendations if you guys are considering that. You have to have some pretty high-tech lights. So um, 
but you know, people really love the plant walls and it's one of the big features. Um, we also provide our, um, you know, if, if, if indoor plant walls are kind of a big lift for your, for your office, we do like a welcome plant. So every time a new engineer or consultant joins the office, we have a little succulent that we bring into them. And so now the whole office is populated with a lot of different types of succulents. Um, and another another cool kind of uh, more affordable way of thinking about you know bringing nature into the space is that um, you know thinking about like um, how you can build community within your office. How can you get together to do like an art project that has reference to biophilic design? Um, we cut up some of our old um, you know paper plans from some of our older projects and did a little origami and it turned them into little cranes. Um, but it was a cool way to have fun that didn't involve, you know, going to a bar and now it's this great, um, you know, nature inspired um, piece of art in our office. So something that we really, that we really love, um, you know, and, and that definitely works for HBA, right? And then next slide. Um, I think this is one of the last ones, but uh, on movement, again, you know, a lot of it is about like where your office is located, but and we're lucky enough to be right next to the uh, Metro 7th Street station. Um, but, you know, that's not the only thing, you know, public transportation isn't the only um, issue here. You know, it's about walkability. Um, we also, we, we do the incredible Metro bike share system. So people can, you know, rent the bikes on the street. We do have bike storage um, in our office. You can see um, one of the old twins there. Um, we also have parking in the parking garage. Um, something that we've kind of carried into and it's been really amazing, um, you know, during the pandemic is that we've done a lot more fitness challenges to kind of create that bond that we all need. We also still have our weekly yoga with a yoga instructor from Downward Dog. She does yoga every Tuesday. So that's a great way to kind of bring fitness and connection, even in the pandemic for some of us that are working from home. Um, we do have some gender neutral restrooms and showers and that has definitely improved you know, um, when I was <laughs> riding my bike from Los Feliz into the office, it's really helpful to have a shower in the summer so you're not stinky at work from, you know, um, avoiding traffic. And we also have ergonomic furniture, um, which, you know, sounds like a really simple thing, but I'm sure we can all attest to having a good chair can really save your back, <laughs> um, especially if you're working from home. So that's just a couple of the things that we've implemented. I think, is that the last slide or is there one more? Um, but yeah, um, happy to talk and I'll, I'll throw it over to Vicki and to share her case study. Can't wait to hear. Thank you, Kathleen. Um, for sharing, for sharing the checklist, <clears throat> the checklist of an office space. I think I'm on here. Are we sharing? We can see your screen. Right. You want to go into presentation mode? I might. That might help, right? <laughs> um, thank you, Kathleen, for sharing that. Um, the checklist for for office workspace, which now is uh, something that we need to do and incorporate into our home office space. So thank you for that. For I'm going to make it a little more simplified because at home we it is the same it is the same um, principles, but we're going to make them a little simple for you to actually do them at home. So. <clears throat> I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start. Uh, I'm just first of all, happy to be here to have this opportunity to um, go through the health uh, to introduce the healthy building, the healthy building um, alliance. But first, um, I would like to say to uh, talk about the um, the screen with our um, with one of our projects. Uh, I am just trying to get something. Here we go. Talk about what's on the screen of one of our projects. Um, and I also want to show my face. I apologize for not doing that. Um, but I don't think I can. So let's just get, get so once again, um, I'm very excited to be here. And this, the picture that we're, that I'm showing <clears throat> is uh, a project 
that we have done that we were a part of and it is uh, these are apartment complex and it was designed by a well-known and respected architect firm named Michael Moulton Architects. It's a skid row housing trust project that was transformed from an existing one-story commercial building in downtown LA. And then they, they transformed it into a mixed use complex. What is remarkable is uh, they took 102 of these apartments and had given them to formerly homeless individuals. It's a lead for homes plat platinum certification, which is the highest plat which is the highest certification possible in lead. It was it's amazing that Skid Row wanted this building to be designed and constructed of the highest performance green homes that is possible. Uh, we were very proud to have been part of their accomplishment. Zinner consult so a little bit about. Zinner Consultants, uh, we've been around since 1990. John Zinner, the, the founder, is one of the early, early adapters of LEED Green Building rating system. We are known for our expertise in LEED, WELL, FITWELL, and Envision. For us, sustainability and policy and practice is is our is is a mantra for us, but it's not it's not our, it's you know it's not just a tagline or something we just say. It really represents our lifelong commitment to improving the environment and our strategic approach to getting there. This is why we are so proud to be service providers for the Healthy Building Alliance program, which offers services that are affordable and accessible. We truly believe that we cannot move forward to a sustainable future unless we all move forward together. How do, how do the five principles impact a home office? As you, as you heard from Kath, as, as you heard from Kathleen, these five principles are critical in making the future of healthy, safe environments and for home offices and communities. We're now working from home and it's our new normal and, 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 and creating a workspace is now more important than ever. When you start to think about the design and the layout for your workspace, it should, it should truly accommodate your, your work preference, your style and items that you will need around you to inspire you to work. Choose a setup that's really going to empower you to be more productive and effective. Functionality, versatile, versatility, and comfort. These are what will accomplish a perfect work area for you. We have heard, to, we have heard today that 90% of our lives are spent indoors. So most of the air that we're breathing is indoor air. We have also heard that two to five times more pollution is indoors than outdoors, meaning that indoor is more harmful than outdoor air. Knowing how fatal, <clears throat> knowing how vital indoor air quality is, it's very important to assess the air quality in your home. And when you're making these efforts to better your indoor air quality, it shows that you not only care about your health, but that you're taking the time that you, that you also care about the health of health and safety of those in your home. Operating windows, opening opposing windows, and having cross ventilation. Um, if you're thinking of refurbishing, use use the low admitting materials paints and adhesives and the, the types of flooring that you choose really make it really affect the air quality. Um, green cleaning products. The bottom line is that green cleaning products cost less than the highly toxic products that can potentially endanger you or your family's health. Mental health. 
it's it's a lot about exposing yourself to nature. Uh, nature reduces our emotional well-being, such as anger, fear, stress. It also contributes to our physical well-being. It reduces our blood pressure, heart rate, and muscle tension. So, posi so positioning your desk by windows, <clears throat> excuse me, with a view of nature is is going to help with those 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 um, emotional well being your your emotions. So do you put so position the desk by the window whenever possible. Uh, indoor potted plants, put them by your desk or your workspace. Or if you're lucky to have a balcony, put potted you know uh, potted beds out there. Uh, Kathleen's was showing how they do that at their office, the, the peppers and growing things. That's, that's what's going to make a big difference on your, on your emotions and your mental health. Most importantly, prioritize work and your life balance. Movement and nourishment. Movement, movement is an essential element of the, the human experience. So ergonomic desks and chairs and standing desks, they're gonna reduce the risk of physical strain on the body. And it provides an opportunity to, be, to, to alternate between sitting and standing positions. So it's very, very important to try and, and, and incorporate those into your, your, your office space. Nourishment. It's been shown that the, the, the more portions of fruit and vegetables eaten per day, the happier, more engaged, and more creative people will be. And you will be, you know, as you're working. So set 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 a time for healthy meal breaks and take those. Ergonomics. Not only are the your not only is your furniture, not only is your furniture and other um, standing desks and things like that are important for your ergonomics, but even little things like your positioning of your mouse and your keyboard make those also help reduce the risk of physical strain on the body. Sound and light. Sound, excessive noise has been scientifically shown to trigger stress. It is very important to address the noise level. These are, there are apps that can, that can measure the noise level. So please, if you, if, if there is a, 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 an excessive noise or anything that, is interrupting your day, take the time to please try and measure, take a, take, measure the noise levels or have someone else help you measure that. But it's important to address it and not let it just be something that continues to happen. Uh, and then there's good noise, which is, you know, when you open the windows, like Kathleen was saying about the, the birds that she was here, that they hear sometimes at their office, it's, allowing those sounds of birds chirping or the wind blowing um, can create ambient background noises that boast you, your, pro your productivity. So th those are good noises. So we, you know, tr we encourage that to keep your windows open. But no matter what the noise is, research has made it clear that sound and background noise have a major impact on your workplace productivity. So do think of that as a, a, a high priority when you are um, addressing your, your home office and how you wanna position yourself and where. Lighting. Lighting windows may, be, may just be among the most productive as natural light and productivity go hand in hand. So natural light is key, is the best, is, is, is the, 
the only way to go. But we all know that that is, is not possible. And when that is not when that's not the case, second best is mid-level lighting, which is which are things like desk lamps floor lamps. These tend to uh, maintain that sense of comfort while also increasing productivity. So we come to the, the, the best part, uh, which we, 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 we really think is, uh, is something that uh, makes a big difference, uh, engagement and long-term goals. This is such a huge peace of mind to have Healthy Building Alliance to help with monitoring the data of the five principles, which then helps you with your long-term goals. And that is why it is very, it's a, and that is why it's a very easy commitment to make in sharing your data with the Healthy Building Alliance. So with saying that, thank you. And um, once again, Zenner Consultants is very, very proud to be a part of this program. Thank you, Vicki, and, and thank you, Kathleen and Devin. Um, I know we've set aside some time for, for Q&A right now for those who are on the call. So. Uh, feel free to put those in the chat or to ask verbally if, if you feel comfortable doing so, um, but we can hang out and uh, answer a few questions relative to the program or even just relative to occupant health to the, to the best of our ability. And Fernanda, if you could maybe share the last slide from our presentation, just so it has the contact info for the program, that'd be great. Are there any questions that anyone has? I'll give it another second or two. I also will say every time I, I see one of these presentations, it makes me completely reassess my own home office environment as I'm sitting here. I'm like, oh no, is my mouse in the right place? Is my chair adjusted uh, and cognizant that it's an ever, you know, it's an ongoing effort to say the least. Uh, it's not like something you just do once. Uh, I feel like I go through these periods where I'm getting outside as much as I need to, and then I realize sometimes I've 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 been at my desk all day. So it's it's good to have these reminders on a constant constant basis. Uh, you can see right now on the screen we have information on the program and our contact information if you have any questions. Um, but this is no questions have come in. I just want to say thank you to everyone who took the time today, and please feel free to reach out to myself or Fernanda if you need anything and. Be healthy and uh, be well, and we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.